welcome to another episode of Super Fast Corner. I'm your host, Kevin Mueller, and today we're going to be talking about some common build errors and some uh, building tips for the MC3 WLS ball differential. So let's go take a closer look. Okay, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do, uh, some building errors that we have, is making sure that the bearing on the inside is seated correctly as well as the thrust bearing on the outside. If the thrust bearing isn't seated uh, deep into the hub, then there's gonna be some issues with binding. So uh, we uh, printed this beautiful, or we gave this free tool for everybody to use to push the um, thrust bearing race down into the hub as much as possible. And what you could do is you could test this by simply putting the hub on with nothing else uh, inserting the thrust bearing and the other race. Uh, once again, you want to make sure that the race that you're using uh, is the small one on the outside and the larger diameter one on the inside. Okay, and from here, we can tighten up the nut. Once again, using the opposite side of our tool and screwing it in. And once again, if we spin this, it should be nice and free to spin and there should be no binding. And if there is some binding, then you're going to want to uh, make sure that there's no dirt in there. You can clean it out with some isopropyl alcohol or some brake disc cleaner. Okay, now that we have that done, we're gonna go through some other common errors that we have. So, um, I'm going to leave this on actually and then we can see. So some of the other issues that we have are actually still with the hub and the types of rims people are using. So not every rim is designed the same way and we use these PN rims when testing the diff. And uh, the PN rims are designed in a way that the rear opening of the, where the, the rear opening of where the ball bearing goes in is wide enough, so it's about six millimeters wide. And this allows there not to be too much pressure placed on the thrust bearing. Uh, some other rims, like the next rim that I have here, uh, their inner diameter of the, um, where the ball bearing sits is actually smaller than six millimeters. So for these next rims, if you have, a six millimeter reamer, you can simply insert the six millimeter reamer and uh, take out any extra material because uh, once again, you're not putting a bearing in the back of the rim anyway. You do have to make sure, of course, that you do not drill all the way through the rim because then the bearing won't sit against the retainer. Um, the retainer on the inside of the bearing is also another issue that people are having a lot of problems with. And that is simply because some uh, rims, like Kyosho rims, have a smaller inner diameter. So the next rim and this PN rim all have a five millimeter inner diameter. And that allows the rim to go over top of the nut here and not interfere. So the nut can't come loose while racing. However, uh, if you're using a rim that has a smaller inner diameter, then you're going to want to use uh, this tiny little special nut that we designed, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to put on and you do need pliers instead of this tool. But once you put it on, it uh, decreases the uh, chance of it coming loose depending on the type of rim that you're using. So once again, if we have this uh, special little nut put on, you do want to tighten this with pliers to make sure that it uh, doesn't come loose while racing. Okay, uh, obviously I don't have the, I just have needle nose pliers right here, but you, you get the idea. Okay, and then um, what you can do is put your tire on and then you wanna use your nut. Now, all wheel nuts are not unfortunately created equal. And uh, we've always used either GL uh, plastic nuts or atomic plastic nuts simply because they have the best holding power onto any thread and I strongly suggest not using any aluminum nuts uh, and even realistically not Kyosho nuts on any of your mini Z's because they simply back off all the time. So when I put um, this 
nut on, I have to make sure that I don't over tighten the nut. Because if I do that, I'm gonna put pressure on the thrust bearing in this direction, while when I have the um, diff completely built, it's gonna be putting pressure on this, uh, in this direction, and the thrust bearing will seize up. So right now, you can see how nicely the whole uh, piece spins. So we can see from both sides here. It's nice and loose, there's no binding whatsoever, okay? So that's a great idea, uh, great way to make sure that your car is working properly. Now, if you over tighten this, you'll notice that uh, the whole thing starts to seize up when you have it entirely assembled. So uh, it's very important to use this nut because if you back it off, it won't uh, come loose and you can set it the correct um, distance so that you don't have too much pressure on the thrust bearing. And once again, that's because every rim is slightly different from the next one, how far uh, this bearing here, the outer bearing sits and in relation to where the end of our nut, special nut here is designed. And this is for all differentials, not just ours, but it just uh, so happens that with our differential, it causes problems with the thrust bearing. So once again, I strongly recommend getting uh, some PN rims and if you can't get access to those, then making sure that you modify uh, any other rim that you get so that it fits correctly. Okay. Now we can just go through the normal build process. Uh, a couple other tips. The thrust bearing here will get looser over time and get gritty. So uh, what you want to do or what, a way to clean it, of course, you can use isopropyl alcohol or brake desk cleaner. But another great way is just to simply put a piece of sandpaper on the bottom and a piece of sandpaper on the top, and you can actually just roll it around. This will take off any tiny little pieces of dirt that have collected on the ball. So it's a great way to clean it at the end. And that way, it won't, the diff won't feel so gritty. Okay. So now the normal build process, uh, I always like to start from the uh, rear here. So we have our rear hub and then our washer. And then last but not least, our uh, pressure adjustment nut. Now, uh, in some cases, this nut can be loose on the shaft. So in that case, you will want to put some Teflon tape around the thread here, and then that way it can be tight and it won't back off or loosen while racing. I do this with all of my differentials and put uh, a thread, a thread lock tape there, or plumber's tape. Okay, and then uh, simply insert our washer, or and then our... spur gear and then once again you can do the same treatment with the ceramic balls by cleaning them using the sandpaper to get off any uh, dirt that might be on them and you at the same time you can uh, also clean them with isopropyl alcohol or brake disc cleaner I like brake disc cleaner the best okay obviously uh, we got a lot of ceramic balls that's because this diff is designed for competition and higher engine uh, capacities. So um, it's, you know, the more balls there are, the even more even the pressure will be on the pressure plates and the more even your differential action will be. Okay, and then once again, making sure that your rear bearing is seated correctly inside now of course you know you want to make sure it's clean and organized and once again you can use uh, the one um, down spoke that's different so it's if you see it it's uh, perpendicular to the two uh, pieces here that hold the rim in place and then simply put that on top Okay, if uh, you see this uh, thrust bearing, which I have now, uh, pop up, sometimes you can just take your tweezers and push it back down to make sure it's seated correctly. And then your thrust bearing, your other race, and then your nut. And uh, one little trick, once again, to make sure this nut is completely secure on here is first to use the tool, but uh, at the same time, secondly, you can 
put the rear hub on, tighten it, and then you can hold the rear hub and then you have more torque that you can apply to this nut to really make it tight. Uh, and then from there, you should be good to go, a nice smooth diff, okay? I hope these tips helped you with building your MC3 WLS ball bearing differential. Please like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching another episode of Superfast Corner.